involvement, basically um, helping you build your experience um, as a professional starting off as a student. Um, and um, I'm gonna go ahead and define a couple of things here for you today, just so you know a little more about internships and how to get your foot in the door, kind of like what I saw with the first post-it note um, shared on the Jamboard. So today we're gonna define what are internships and what does it mean to be involved or build your experience, as well as the power of being a student. Maybe that sounds a little ominous, but I'm gonna expand a little further soon. And then how to start building your experience. So maybe you're not sure where to start. We're gonna define the steps on how to start specifically. And then also how to find the experience as well. Um, and then lastly, maximizing the experience once you do get your internship experience. Um, and then there might be stuff that you already have as well. So feel free to also um, like keep note of that. Like if you already have things um, on your resume, like you maybe already have an internship or things that can be considered um, experience building. Um, I want to also make sure that like we're covering like what those things are and that they can be used towards building your career. So what you'll be able to learn at the end of this workshop is um, explaining the importance of experimental learning, with, which is essentially the internships and involvement piece, and then also reflect on your preparedness and set expectations of what to do in the future, um, and then also evaluate the impact of an experience on your career. So um, these are just the core competencies that are part of the Career Center and career centers across the nation. Um, but the three today that we're gonna be um, covering is critical thinking, professionalism, and career and self-development. So I'm gonna go ahead and describe um, what are internships exactly. So um, internships defined, I'm gonna go ahead and start at the bottom here, are usually around 10 weeks. Um, they're a formal process um, where they have a set start and end date. Um, you get to learn more about the industry. It has a mentorship component and can be paid or unpaid. Um, and then we also have an internships guide as well on our Career Center website. But similar to what um, I saw on the post-it note, it also can be your foot in the door to like a job as well. Um, so just to kind of like um, build a little further on that, um, you are participating in internships uh, also as a way to build your experience. You don't have to um, only have internships in order to build experience though. So um, all kinds of things that you're doing at UCR and outside of UCR um, can be considered experimental learning. So um, it can essentially be um, anything like included in this list where you're building experience, um, class projects or assignments, research labs, personal research with faculty, community involvement, volunteering, campus involvement, internships, and part-time jobs. So even y'all being part of Psychi today, um, that counts as like you building your experience because you're choosing to spend your free time um, to spend it with um, other psychology students and um, interested in learning more about the field and like being involved in it. Um, and essentially the experimental learning process is trying out an experience, um, whether it be part-time or with a time limit. And it also can be paid or unpaid. And then um, you're essentially just involved in different things that pique your interest. So um, like I said, Psychi is a great example of this, but it also can be like um, anything you just spend your extra time on or even what you do during your classes. Um, and then also it gives you an introduction to the work environment and the job functions as well. So um, this is the purpose of experimental learning to help us learn more about um, how to get started with the careers and how to um, just be part of um, this dynamic of going into the workplace um, as you're in college. And then I'm gonna go ahead and expand further on the power of being a student. So right now you're in the learning stage of your life, whether you're a freshman or a senior, um, you're trying out different options and um, just essentially completing your degree um, in order to figure out the career you want. Um, and because of that, you're more likely open to learning because um, as a student, you're more likely to kind of like be a sponge and wanna learn things that is being presented to you. 
And um, there's power behind that kind of attitude because professional pr professionals love to talk to students um, for that very reason. They love to talk to students that are interested in what um, the employer is talking about, um, the career paths that they're on. Um, think about like when you're like having a conversation, when people ask you questions about yourself, like that usually makes you feel good that like people are interested in you and like um, you wanna talk about yourself more. Um, now think of it like with the career lens. Um, if you're asking a professional about their job and like who they usually look for to like um, bring onto their team, that's essentially about themselves and what they do every day because that's what professionals do. They show up to their job um, full of time and they uh, are like committed and immersed in it. So for you to show interest is really helpful for them because it gives them room to also expand further on like the kinds of things they're doing and the kinds of things that um, they may be looking for in order to make the team um, work as a better dynamic. So um, there is power behind being a student in this stage of your life at UCR. And um, what I mean by that power is that it helps you have a gateway to um, networking with others. So for that reason, um, you're able to talk to others about um, like their career journeys or like what it's like to be at um, the environment they're at or even how to get hired. Um, so I really recommend that you go on informational interviews, which is essentially um, just speaking to professionals about their career journeys for around 30 minutes. And um, we have an informational interview guide that I'll show you a little later on. But in the guide, we have a bunch of questions that you can ask them. They also give you a suggestion on like how to request the informational interview as well, which is really helpful. Um, and then the questions are separated into different categories. So then it's going to be about like the nature of the work or like the salary um, or other things that um, you might be interested in. There's like, I think, 10 different categories of questions you can ask them. And then you can pick out the ones that um, are most important to you that you want to cover during that 30 minutes with them. Um, and then you'll be able to just make this relationship with them um, by having this informational interview. So it just kind of takes time to build a relationship and informational interviews are a great um, way to open the door and have a gateway to networking because it starts off with a small ask. You're asking them to like talk about themselves and their career journey, which is essentially like um, stuff they already know, they don't need to prepare too much about. So when you start off with a small ask, then they get to know you a little more and you can um, explain what your interests are as a UCR student, um, the kinds of things you're getting up to that you're part of Psychi, but you're also interested in learning about the fields that you're asking them about. And then they may be um, able to get to know you a little more too. Um, and then also, there, it, you can also take advantage of um, being present on campus or being in a hybrid world. So also think um, pretty broad in terms of who can be this person that you ask informational interviews about. Um, they ideally should be people that you're not sure like what the workplace is like or like you don't know how people do their jobs. So professors can definitely be part of that group of people. Um, because maybe you're interested in pursuing like a PhD like them um, and you want to ask like what it's like to have gone through the PhD process they did. Um, so that's what office hours are for essentially. Um, they're not only like for you to go when um, you don't know how to like answer like homework questions, they're also there to just be a support and um, help you along your journey at UCR. So really take advantage of those office hours, whether they be present in person or um, online. Um, and also think broad in terms of like who else you can get to know on campus since you um, typically spend like a lot of your time like going to classes and whatnot. In between those classes, you can um, potentially visit um, other types of UCR staff such as the CAPS um, Center. And we have the counseling um, resource center here called CAPS and they have many um, PhD and PsyD um, clinical professionals um, on their team and then you might be able to like talk to them as you like visit the front desk and kind of make um, your introductions and then that's another way that you can um, network and then same with like HR or any kind of job that you feel like could potentially exist at UCR and we have a lot of people here on this campus so there might be um, 
a person that really piques your interest. And a lot of times people have bios on their website too. So it will be helpful to also like read about like who they are and like how they got to the path they did. So that's always helpful as well. Um, and then, like I said, relationship building takes time. So start off by building rapport, getting comfortable with the person, starting off with like um, small talk about like what the class was like, um, how they got into the field they're in. And then that can kind of like build out more into like what your interests are. And then maybe even voicing like um, some of the concerns you have with the industry and then they can kind of speak on that. So um, that's what I mean by like having power of being a student. It's a temporary stage of your, stage of your life and you should um, take the most advantage of it as you can. Um, but totally understand that it's something to balance in between everything else, such as midterms. So just think about like times when you're able to do this, like maybe during like your breaks or before classes start again, um, or like the the beginning of the school year as well. So like try to also be intentional about the time um, in like fitting this in. And then um, how to start thinking of um, things that you can do, the experimental learning experiences. Um, I want you to think about the reasons why you chose psychology as your major. Um, think about like what drew you to the major. Maybe it was that um, people have told you that um, you're a great listener, or maybe you're interested in like how the brain functions and you wanted to learn more. So um, think of those reasons and then write down um, what those interests are and also write down even more like what you know about the fields you're interested in. So like write down that like, you know, you need a PhD or you need a master's degree um, for those things, um, but also identify what you're not sure of. So it's okay to have like, um, a bunch of questions about what you're not sure about. Um, it's very rare that people are experts right off the cuff. Usually people are not. So it's totally normal that you're not sure about like the career paths that are in front of you. And what is helpful is writing them down and identifying what you're not sure about, because then um, that will kind of help you like how to move forward um, in like either requesting an informational interview about somebody that works in the field that you're not sure about, or um, you can experience it like through um, the internships or like other kinds of jobs um, in order to learn more about like yourself, what your skills are, um, how what you have to offer, as well as what is the work environment like. So all of this is essentially you um, trying to figure out what your values are and really um, reminating in this time of self-discovery as a college student. Um, this a big, it's a big transition in life to go from high school to college and then out of college. So a lot of this time is you um, figuring out your identity and what really matters to you and how you wanna move forward with your life and the career path. So it's a process, it's a journey. And these are some steps that you can take um, in order to help you like move forward and kind of see what you already know and then define what you don't in order to like um, help yourself answer these questions. And then feel free to keep like updating this kind of um, practice as well. Um, like maybe every quarter or every year, you can kind of see the progress that you make along the way um, by practicing these four steps as well. Um, and then also like when you're choosing the experiences, look for components of the experiences you know you enjoy, which ties back to like um, the reasons why you chose psychology as the major. Um, and that can be like helping children, being involved with the community or researching more about the brain. So like all those different things, like um, components that you know your experience, but then also helping you figure out like the things you're not sure about, like how much does it cost to get, how much does it, how much does it pay to be a researcher? Um, does it weigh on people to like work every day, like with children on the spectrum? Like how do these things kind of play out? Um, so really like be specific about the questions you don't know, but it's okay to start off broad. And then like the more specific questions will come as they like, um, as you progress with like um, your career path. And essentially experimental learning helps us determine what kinds of skills we like to use in a job by having a trial run of executing the tasks assigned to us. Because at, that's essentially what a job is, um, whether it be part-time internship or a club role, um, you have tasks assigned to you, you need to get them done and um, you're not tied to it. It's just something that you're doing um, like part-time in addition to you being a student. So it's you testing it out to see whether you like um, 
having conversations in a group, whether you like um, presenting um, workshops to others um, and all those different things. So that's what the purpose of experimental learning is. We don't know these things about ourselves until we really try it. Um, for example, I really um, am a introverted person. I'm really shy. So it was always hard for me to like share in the class when like the teachers asked me questions. So I never pictured myself like being in front of others and like presenting things to people. But then um, I signed up to be like a success coach at Pasadena City College. And then that was a big part of my job. I met with people one on one to help them with their um, transfer goals. But then I also like presented workshops really similar to this to talk about um, how to transfer successfully, how to take advantage of the resources on campus. And I found that I really liked it, but I wouldn't have known that um, unless I tried it. And I realized it was because I'm sharing about things I'm really passionate about. And I'm really glad that I figured that out because I get to be here today and just kind of share all these things and live into that. But if you had asked me like um, as a freshman, if that's what I see myself doing um, in five years or whatnot, um, I definitely would have said no. So like, um, that's what these experimental learning experiences are for, for you to like learn and grow along the way and figure out what really works for you. And you don't really know until like you're at that, at that stage when you're like there, like in the job and all those different things. Um, so the next step um, that I wanna show you is how to find an internship and experience. I want you to think about these two questions that are really similar to the previous step of, step of reflection. So what populations are you interested in working with? Um, and what kind of setting do you want to gain experience in? And then I have a couple of options here on the list, but um, it essentially is just repeating what this um, handout is, which I created um, for y'all as well. So um, when you click on the link, it'll bring you to a Google Drive that you'll have access to um, for the handout. And I'll just quickly um, kind of like go through like what this handout is. So um, this is the involvement piece um, for y'all as well as the internships piece. So um, I wanted to define to you all like what are the on-campus experiences um, y'all can be looking into. So um, you could be a research assistant, which you may already know. This leads you to the review research portal. And um, there are professors that post um, seeking research assistance um, to the studies that they're doing. Um, that's kind of what the professors are like all here to do at UCR or any UC. They're primarily here to continue doing research. So they're constantly doing research as part of their job. So they are usually looking for research assistance with that. Um, so if you feel like you, it's a little too late to apply to the labs or the labs look really intimidating to you, I really recommend you asking faculty directly. So um, like I said, I know it's a little um, intimidating to visit off office hours and all those things, but um, they're there for a reason. And if you come and introduce yourself, um, do that networking piece, um, you can also voice to them that you're interested in doing more research and if they are doing any personal research. Because a lot of the times, the ones that are posted on the labs, those are ones that the professors have the time to like post on there to recruit help, but there's also a lot of professors that don't have the time to post the help, but they do need it. And you don't know if they don't need it unless you ask yourself. So especially if you just like make a name for yourself, you let them know what your interests are and how that aligns with like their research that could be really helpful. So like I said, most of the time you see um, faculty are doing research like in conjunction to them teaching. So more likely than not, they are doing research. We also have some research programs and scholarships you can look into that's um, part of UCR. It essentially is like um, you doing more research, but then you getting rewarded um, with like some compensation for that. It usually is kind of like a scholarship fellowship thing. Um, feel free to look through it. They're designed um, for like graduate preparatory programs. So if you're interested in going into the PhD or master's route, and then they also have some like presenting research. And this is um, where you can kind of look to look more into like the different ones. Um, but it's essentially to help you like conduct your own um, personal research and um, having accountability to like have it reviewed by professors and um, your peers and then presenting that information. So um, you can also look into this as a way to build your experience as well. Um, and then if you're looking to like more so work on campus, 
Um, you can also um, be a peer advisor or peer educator. We have um, many peers on campus. Um, ones that kind of come to mind for me first are the Chaz First um, peers. I don't see them like on here, but if you Google Chaz First um, peers, uh, it will pop up for you. And Chaz First is um, being a peer advisor to um, freshman students or transfer students that are in the Chaz major. So you're helping them assimilate to the college campus and you're also giving them tips. And then you're also giving workshops um, kind of similar to this, but about different topics. Um, and then there's also the career center peer educators that do something very similar to what I do. Um, and then they also um, have like ethnic and gender center peer advisors as well. So feel free to like look through um, our peer network and see like what kind of piques your interest. Oh yeah, I see Chaspers here. So here's Chaspers, but just remember that they also recruit for like freshman Chaspers peer mentors too. Um, so yeah, I really recommend kind of looking into the peer advisor role that will kind of help you um, figure out if you wanna like do workshops or like one-on-one -on -one kind of advising. Um, and then we also have the ethnic and gender center um, student coordinators. So think of um, like the Women's Center, the Asian Student Program Center, um, Chicano Student Program Center, um, they have students that run um, all the events there and work as a team. They also can serve on like the committee for like UCR in general as like a student um, advocate. So if you're interested in event planning and being part of like the community, like tied to identities, then this could be a good role for you. And then you can also think about social and media and marketing um, kinds of roles for the UCR office if you're interested in like the business side of psych. Um, and then in addition to on-campus things, you can also serve as like, um, like a president or like on the e-board of like any of the clubs that you're in as well. Um, and then as for off-campus, I do have many listed here. So this is determined by special populations um, and how you use this um, list uh, essentially is you now kind of know like what these different um, words are and you plug them in using the handshake or career shift um, job search engine. And then that will help you know like that there's jobs out there that you can like get um, right now, like as a student. So um, there's always gonna be like nursing homes out there that need volunteers, or they also can be, um, they can also be uh, called caregiver role um, because our um, older population needs that support. Um, so you will almost always see that like on Handshake or Career Shift, or even if you like look up locally, like the ones near you, um, they always are looking for volunteers to help with that community. And then um, there's also Operation Safe House as well as Safe Family Justice Center. Both of these are um, for domestic abuse victims and you're supporting um, the families going through those situations. And there's different things that you can do to like be involved with um, these centers. And then the behavior interventionist and technician role, that's um, working with children on the spectrum or with ADHD and similar um, disorders. Um, so you're gonna be working with them to help them um, work on social plans and practicing ABA therapy, which is um, essentially helping them get more uh, situated and comfortable um, to the social situations that they find themselves in relating to the uh, schools they're part of or um, family life and all those different things. So this is a really similar role to like maybe being a therapist. Um, and um, it's something that you can actually start doing with just a high school degree as well. So they also have like part-time and full-time roles for these. So if you're interested in that, there's many of these roles that you can look up on Handshake and Career Shift. Um, even if you're not from Riverside, they have this role um, pretty frequently, even um, in hometowns like in NorCal and whatnot. And then, then if you're not able to like really drive um, too much, but you do want to still gain experience, you can also consider um, being a suicide or crisis hotline operator. Um, these are the three that I know about that you can get involved in. Um, so these ones, um, they don't pay you, but they do um, provide you really good training and experience on how to um, talk people down from crisis intervention and all those different things. So um, here are ones um, contributing to a special population. And then we also have healthcare. So if you're interested in going to the medical route, the psychiatry route, 
Um, we do have like a medical scribe role that you can look into with the job search engines as well, as well as internship programs that you can look into as well. So um, there, here's a couple that are local, Riverside Health, Riverside University Health System and City of Hope. And basically what it is, is you are able to um, be part of the um, hospital and help them with their operations um, in the way that you can as a um, just a college student. Um, it's not going to be like uh, really intense things, but it does expose you to like the medical setting and how they interact with patients and whatnot. Um, and then as for business, uh, here are a couple of things that you can look into. Um, for business, it works a little different from these other populations and um, categories. Business has um, a more of that traditional route where you do an internship and then they're more likely to hire you after you do the internship. So a great foot in the door for like um, your traditional kind of job relating to business is doing the internship so that you can like um, pretty much be an apprentice for what they're looking for. So um, that can be like an HR internship that you look up, a marketing internship that you look up, and then um, UX design is becoming one that's more popular as well in psych. Um, so UX design um, might be kind of difficult to get right away as an internship because they usually recruit also like people with master's degrees. So I also recommend you look up product developer and web developer in your internship searches because those are really similar roles to UX design. And then it helps you like get more exposed to the UX design um, world um, in addition to you building out your portfolio. Um, and then as for the industrial um, organizational psych, um, IO psych for short, um, here are a couple of job titles that you can look into as well um, for the internship roles. Um, I know for myself, when I heard about IO, it sounded really interesting, but then how would I like be part of like, um, like helping an organization get better at doing their practices if I've never even worked in an organization before? Um, it's through like being part of their organizational change management and training um, internship team. Um, and essentially you would be assisting the people that are the experts. So that's what these internships are designed for, helping you learn more about like how the organization runs and um, all those little things. And then also talent acquisition specialists. And then by the way, I found these terms by just going on LinkedIn. Um, and then looking at people that are IO psychologists currently, and then looking back into their history to see like what they did to start off um, in their career path as an IO psychologist. And then these were the popular terms that were popping up. You can definitely try that same tip um, by like even checking the UCR page first and then clicking on the alumni tab. Um, I'm happy to like do a demo of that. Like if people ever want to like visit with me, but um, you can also like ask me any questions too, like in a follow-up email if you're not sure how to find that. But um, that's a really great tip on like how to research more, more about like roles that you're really interested in. Um, but I just wanted to put like the most popular terms on like a handout so y'all know where it is. And then lastly, um, one that's kind of popular is criminal justice. And we do have like a Riverside Police Department internship program slash volunteer as well as the FBI internship program and CI student program. So be sure to look into that if you're interested in these criminal justice fields. Um, they have like built out like um, formal programs for you to like go into. And um, the internships are, like I said, like more of that set, like beginning and end date, as opposed to like um, maybe being um, the behavior interventionist where you're just doing that um, as long as you need to as you're a student. Um, and then these internship programs have like that set end date. So that's like the differences like between when I add intern to a title or whatnot. Um, but like I also mentioned, they typically like remember if you did the internship or not. So that's kind of like um, the benefit to it as well. And then on top, I also have the resources for you to look at. So the handshake um, is where you can look into for like the job searches, but we also have career shift. Um, you can make an account through this link um, by using um, the, the ad code, which is Scotty. And um, it essentially is um, compiling all of the jobs out there that are like on Google and Indeed and all those different things. They're putting it onto one space for you for career shift. We usually advise our students to use Handshake first because um, they're recruiting for UCR students specifically. But if you wanna look um, even more after like not finding too much on Handshake, you can try career shift because it compiles like all the information there. 
Um, and then we also have these guides for you. Um, so the networking guide that I kind of mentioned, um, how to like put yourself forward, talking to professors, um, and then the informational interviews, like kind of the questions I was mentioning. And if you need any support with resume and cover letter, we also have that here. Um, and then if you also are interested in the healthcare route, we have the HPAC Center, which is the health and professional um, pro advising center. Um, and they can help prepare you to like figure out like how to prepare for like medical school and all those things. So um, feel free to also look up the HPAC at UCR if you're interested in that route. Um, so that's a pretty lengthy and meaty um, um, handout, but I really wanted to put together like um, all these different roles that are um, really uh, coming across like in a lot of the appointments I have with students and I think could be of interest to you and as well as your peers. So feel free to share this um, to anybody that um, you find like will need, uh, will, like, can benefit from the information um, because I know that there's a lot of like um, how to find the jobs kind of question because we maybe just go into the job search and put like psychology and whatnot. So this is helpful to determine like a little more about like what kinds of experiences we wanna be getting and um, learning a little more about what we might be getting ourselves into with like the little time you may have, like in addition to balancing your classes and all the other things outside of school too. So I hope that this was like helpful to kind of see like um, all the different roles at a glance so that you can kind of compare and contrast the different things as well. Um, and then now I'll be transitioning to talking about what you do once you get the internship. Um, so um, this is what you do, like it, even if you have started like an experience before, um, not just an internship, um, this is to help like just move yourself forward and be intentional like about the whole process. So the first step of um, setting your, um, your experience is to set your intentions. So ask yourself questions about like the experience you're learning. I split it up into three different categories um, because that typically is what we're focusing on relating to career. So for academic, what do you want to learn? Are there opportunities for research at the internship you're part of? Um, and do you need further education um, in order to get to the career path you're interested in? And then for professional, what skills do you want to develop with the experience that you're gaining? And how can you build your network? So maybe identify the kinds of people you wanna have conversations with before the end of your experience. Um, and then for self-discovery, what parts of the internship do you enjoy and not enjoy? What are you excelling at? And what are your areas for growth? So um, here are some questions to kind of like think about before you start the experience. And then um, setting your expectations once you arrive onto the internship or experience and like are coming to it re regularly. Um, look at the position descriptions, review the responsibilities, see if they're aligning with what you're living out like in the experience. Understand the objectives and deliverables of what they're asking and be upfront about what your career goals are that you eventually wanna go um, pursue your master's degree or you wanna learn more about the master's degree um, in order to like be committed to it whether it be one of those two options, you can kind of like share that kind of thing to the people that um, are your supervisors or mentors or even peers. Um, and also learn um, the contract as well so that you know what you're signing up for um, with the um, agreement between you and your supervisor. And then also um, have a standardized way of getting feedback from your supervisor or people that are mentoring you. So um, know when your check-ins are with your supervisors ask how you'll be evaluated and um, see like what they will have to say to you like about the performance you're doing. And then also during the internship, keep track of what you're learning. So like keep track of the tasks that you've been assigned, any additional projects or roles that they ask you to do um, in addition to like the main job and then update your resume by the end of that as well. Um, be a sponge, uh, so find a mentor, make connections with others, be open to learning, have, being conversational with others, uh, become an expert on the career path that you're interested in, go the extra mile and ask those questions you're not sure about, um, go to those uh, events that they're offering in addition to the real, jo real job, um, but also be mindful of burnout. So I say go the extra mile, but um, I, I understand. <laughs> 
that that might make um like you feel like a little tired to think about that's that's what I know I feel a little tired like seeing so be mindful of like what you can and cannot handle too but um if you feel like you're not able to get that experience again and um what it's like a, kind of like a small stakes like you're just like being more social or like attending a workshop then I would say like go the extra mile and see like um if you can like gain something from that experience but just be mindful of like what else you have on your plate too and then lastly um plug into like the employee socials or resource groups because you might find that they have a lot of benefits um for those full-time employees and then you can kind of learn like if you do eventually want to go back there and like kind of establish your roots um, and then there's also like carpooling and talking to teams and offices that are similar to your main office. And then um, lastly, leave a lasting impression and keep in touch with um, the people that you worked with after you leave the experience. So when you leave a lasting impression, they sometimes may ask you to have an exit interview or discuss like, what was it like to work there? It might not be like a formal exit interview. It could just be like a last conversation you have with your supervisor where they learn like what you got away from the internship, if there's anything that they can do to help support in the transition out. And then be sure to be um, polite and respectful and write thank you notes to them so that they know what you're grateful for. Um, and then that will make it easier to ask them to be like, references for them after you get them like a thank you note. I know some people like, like to get like Starbucks gift cards or like um, things like that. But I personally have just wrote a thank you card and um, maybe the people I worked with for like many years, I got them like a really small gift, um, but thank you cards are more than enough. Um, and then, yeah, by the end of that, you'll be able to ask them for a reference um, in the future. And then after that, like after you've left the internship, make sure to keep in touch with them because you don't want them to kind of like forget you by the time you do need them to be a reference. So try to keep in touch with them, maybe like um, once every other quarter and let them know like what you're up to, um, like how it's your like um, X quarter at UCR, you're learning about these things and you think about how the internship still applies. So like the things you're learning in your class um, or things that you've researched more about. And then share your experiences with your other peers, as well as other people in general, like even your family or um, just like your friends that aren't even in psychology, just be open about like sharing these experiences that you have, because you might find that you had a really different experience from someone else once they shared their experiences to you, or um, you might find that it's really similar to someone else. And you can kind of see like what it's like to like be going out there and like being that college student and like seeing all the different things that like you're learning in this time, building community and leaning on that is really helpful. And then lastly, updating your documents. So like your resume, handshake profile and like LinkedIn as well, just so people know what you're up to. Um, and then lastly, reflect on your experience. So really similar to like setting your intentions. Um, also make sure to reflect on your experiences and feel free to even kind of compare like when you set your intentions and after you had the experience as well. So again, these three different categories of academic, professional and self-discovery. Um, and then this is like after the fact, you can maybe like take like a week or two to get back to this and like reflect on it fully. Um, but to what degree was I academically prepared? Did the things in my class um, help set a foundation for me to learn about it? Or did I feel like I didn't study enough about the field in order to like have the background info when people ask me about like psychology or all those different things? And then do I need to refocus on some areas to be better prepared for my next experience? And then that can kind of help you figure out if you wanna do like more specific research in different areas. Um, and in professional, how do I talk about an internship I didn't like? Um, so it's totally okay to like not have enjoyed the internship fully. So maybe reflect back on like what parts of it you didn't like and how do you um, communicate that to others and see if other people may have felt the same way about the experiences they had. Um, and is this something you would like to pursue further? Um, and then lastly, self-discovery, how much did you enjoy your experience and what parts of the role did you enjoy and not enjoy? Remember that the experimental learning is um, the opportunity for you to like trial run it. So like really think about like whether you want to like continue it 
further because the trial run kind of ends and you like figure out what you want to do um, by the time like you reach um, like the end of your like UCR career. And then this is essentially just helping you like um, figure out the steps as you get closer to that. So that's mostly like the last um, portion of what I wanted to share today. Um, if there is any questions, I we do have some time to like reflect back, but before that, I'll also check the Jamboard as well. But just really appreciate like um, y'all being here and like listening to what I have to share to y'all. But let me just double check like what's on the Jamboard and then we can open it up to like a bigger um, question, like discussion if needed. Um, they help you get your foot in the door. And then, okay. Also, it allows us to stand out when applying for jobs and really gives us experience and what to expect. That's true about like the internships as well. How do you find internships for psych majors with minimal experience um, in terms, when is the ideal time to apply? Okay, great two questions here. So um, this question here um, can be answered by looking at this, hand hand this handout. Um, all these different things require really minimal experience. Um, they're essentially looking for you to be a college student. So the experience that they're looking for is the class projects you've done and like you being involved like on campus in some way, like in a leadership role sometimes or like any special projects you've done. So I know for the behavior interventionist role, like they usually are looking to see like what students are learning in their classes. And if you write like a couple of assignments or projects as your experience, then they like to see that. And they like to see that you're being intentional about like your studies. And then that's pretty minimal experience because it's something that you're already doing as like a um, student, but they even like consider people that have been like babysitters and um, all those different things too. Or like, even if you've been a volunteer in your high school clubs, you can also include that as experience on your resume. If you're a freshman and a sophomore by junior year, um, you hopefully will have a little more experiences and then you can phase that out. But if you're a freshman and sophomore that's just starting off, you could definitely include like the volunteer community um, service kinds of things on your resume. So all these different things here, um, they don't require for you to have like um, a degree in order to get into them. Um, so they are like even like below like the entry level starting off point. Um, I hope that answered your question, but if it didn't, like feel free to like um, expand a little further on the question if you're not sure. Um, in terms of what year of undergrad and season of the year, when is the ideal time to apply for an internship? That's a great question. Um, so typically like internships have like the hiring cycles like y'all may have noticed. So like for the summertime, people start recruiting like in the winter until spring. So like um, you can start looking now if you like at like any of these like internships that I kind of pointed out here, they might already be like recruiting for that. Um, so they kind of start, yeah, like from now until like springtime. And then if you're interested in like a winter internship, then they start um, recruiting for that like in um, like summer to fall for the winter ones. Um, and then, yeah, like as, as for the other things like research assistant, that's probably when it, that's probably like when like classes start. So like um, that's when you can kind of look for that um, before classes start even. Um, these research programs and scholarships, it depends like when their deadline is, but kind of similar to like the classes thing. So in the summertime is probably when I would like look at these or like when it's getting closer to the school you're starting. Um, I think peer advisor and educators, they also recruit like, um, like in the summertime or spring. So even start looking in the spring potentially for like these kinds of roles on campus. Um, so they look starting in the springtime to hire for like the fall. Uh, school year because they usually want like a whole year with the student um, and in these other roles they are like ongoing so they they hire all the time like for these roles here so um, and then even the medical scribe is also something like that's ongoing so that's the typical seasons for like the internship hiring times um, so I hope that answered your question as well um, are there any other like thoughts uh, reactions to like the things I shared today um, or any like additional questions. Um, I don't have a question, but I did want to share a little bit more about Operation Safe House because I work there. Yeah. Um, I actually got the job through Psychi's mentorship program. One of my mentors shared it with me. So 
Um, I really recommend the program if you guys aren't a part of it. Um, it's been really helpful for me. And um, I'm part of the Cup of Happy program. And so it's really cool because we get to go to um, local high schools in the area, depending on which county you're assigned to. And we have the mentorship program. And we also do um, LGBTQ group. And then we also do a speakers bureau where we share uh, about our mental health journey and our recovery. So yeah, I think that's um, something like if you're interested, I would definitely say uh, Operation Safe House is a good place to start um, like as a part-time worker. But yeah, I uh, wanna share, I wanna say thank you for like sharing all the information. Of course, thank you so much, Alyssa, for sharing your experience. It's so valuable to like share what it was like um, to others. And um, I'm really glad we got to hear that firsthand experience. So um, thank you so much. Um, is there any like other reactions to the presentation or maybe um, y'all have done internships yourselves that you may wanna suggest similar to Alyssa? Does this like information um, like make you more nervous or does it kind of help you feel like more prepared? Um, reactions like that could be helpful um, just so like we kind of see where we're at too. And you can kind of share that like in the chat if you like as well, if you don't, if you didn't want to unmute. Yes, thanks for the question. Um, I sent the presentation to uh, Tiffany as well as the handout. So both will be getting sent out to you um, by the end of this presentation. Yes, so we will be receiving the presentation um, in the newsletter. Uh, so definitely check that out. I have the handout and the presentation slides. I'll go ahead and also stop recording.